All right, I want to talk a little bit about this idea of the distinction between past performance and future outcome. And I've been using this phrase a lot, that past performance is not indicative of future outcome. And I want to explain what I mean when I say that, because there seems to be a lot of uh, misunderstanding or contention as it relates to this idea. So one of the things that's been most helpful to me in crystallizing my understanding of uh, this principle in data is fantasy sports. So I play a lot of fantasy sports and baseball is a sport that's rich in data that does a lot of work around statistical modeling and projections and all of these things um, because it's really important. The whole point of the game is to try and understand which players are going to perform best in the future, right? So you're trying to make predictions around various players. You're trying to think about who you're going to add off the waiver wire, whether you're going to accept a trade or at the beginning of the year, who you're going to draft and why. And so there are countless attempts at trying to think about future performance and how their past performance relates to future performance, okay? So let's just use a quick illustration to highlight the point. So Matt Olson, first baseman for the Atlanta Braves, awesome player, uh, but he's off to a not very good start so far this year. If we look, and we're just going to use um, home runs as a simple illustration at this point. There's lots of different data points, but uh, we all understand home runs. So, so far in 28 games, or sorry, in 44 games and 200 plate appearances, he has five home runs. Not very good for a guy who's supposed to be a great power hitter, okay? Last year, he hit 39 home runs, okay? So five home runs so far this year. Now let's take a different player who's off to a much better start, CJ Crone of the first baseman of the Colorado Rockies, okay? So in 43 games, so in one less game than Madison, and virtually the same number of plate appearances, he has 12 home runs. So two and a half times as many home runs so far for CJ Crone as Matt Olson. So let's imagine we stop right there. And all you had as a data point to make a decision about the future was the historical performance. You said player A has five home runs in 43 games, uh, or in 44 games. Player B has 12 home runs in 43 games. And you were asked which player will hit more home runs in the future. If you isolate that decision exclusively to the historical data, you would have to say CJ Crum, right? And uh, the problem is that's not how predictive data works. That's not actually indicative of what he will do in the future. There's a much more sophisticated set of inputs that understand future performance, okay? And in baseball, there's lots of models that have been built by really, really smart mathematicians. Um, one of my favorite is something called the BAT-X, uh, developed by a guy named Derek Carty that uses StatCast data. So they look at the quality of the content, exit velocity, velocity launch angle, tons of inputs, and we'll talk more about what all those are in a second, to predict future outcome. Because what they know and understand totally is that past performance is not indicative of future outcome. There are much better inputs about how many home runs Matt Olson and CJ Crone will hit in the future than his previous number of home runs. Okay, so let's look at it. The bat, the rest of the season, for CJ Crone, predicts that uh, in the bat X, in 101 games and 427 plate appearances, that CJ Crone will hit 22 home runs and bat 265 the rest of the season. Okay? Let's go look at what the bat X says for Matt Olson. Matt Olson predicts that in 113 games, 48, 485 plate appearances, that Matt Olson will actually hit more home runs than CJ Crone, despite hitting two and a half times less so far. Okay? Well, how could that possibly be? Well, it's because of the quality of, there's a number of things. One, the sample size of 44 games is only a tiny piece of the consideration of a future projection model. They also use regression to the means. So they look at league averages, the performance of the environment. Is the ball different this year versus last year? They look at the quality of contact that they're making, whether they've been lucky or unlucky. There's a ton of different inputs and you can read and I'll even share. Here's a link to the bat X model. And so what's great, you'll see here, is that Derek Carty's breaking down how he builds a predictive model, okay? And he says he evaluates 150 plus variables, starting with basics like average launch angle and exit velocity, and then evaluating various deviations and subsets of launch angles, spray angles, exit velocities, hit qualities, and so on. League-wide home run rates spiking over 20% between a launch angle of this and this. How does that affect for, uh, predict future home runs? The point is that there are countless inputs that go into the model about the prediction in the future, not the historical performance, okay? And this is the same thing with Facebook ads, okay? There are countless more inputs that go into determining future purchasing behavior besides what you see in your ads manager. And Facebook tells us this. They, they describe something called the breakdown effect, uh, where you can see that in this example, they say our system's testing both ad sets. The platform detects ad set two is escalating quicker and shifts budget to ad set one. And you can see that the future performance changes from the past. They illustrate to this 
this to us all the time. This is why they wanted us to move to CBO is because if you were a media buyer and let's say you exist on day four right here, okay? And you're trying to insert yourself to make a decision about the past and you look back at this data and you see, oh, ad set one has outperformed ad set two. Turn off ad set two. Well, what is clearly illustrated in this uh, effect and what we could, we're working on a really cool uh, report that shows performance over time for an ad set and how you can see that it is not linear <laughs> at all. In other words, the future is almost never like the past. And you can see that illustrated. If you look at this subset of data here in comparison to this subset of data here, they have wildly different outcomes. And this is why as humans, we don't build statistical models to predict the future in our minds when we open an ad account. We open an ad account, we don't even so much as pull out a calculator, we look at a few rows of data that are a very limited set of sing signals that have almost no predictive value about the future and we attempt to insert ourselves and make decisions. And all I am saying is that there are models being built on the other side that consider way more inputs about the future than what I can do as a human being. This is not a knock on any human individual. We as people are not good at this. This is not how our brains process information well. This is why we created computers in the first place because they're much better at processing large sets of data and making predictions about the future. And so this idea is really important. Whether you're trying to predict who's going to hit the most home runs for the rest of the season um, or you're trying to make a decision in your ad account, you do not want to limit yourself to historical data to make predictions about the future. And this is why we want to remove human decision making as much as possible and allow the algorithmic modeling, which builds predictive uh, models to make decisions for you. And so I would just challenge anyone who thinks that they can open up, whether it's a third party attribution tool or even a Facebook ad account and look at the data and make accurate predictions about the future to sort of submit to the idea that you don't have a model for doing that that's replicable and that has been proven to generate outcomes. And Facebook's telling you that the past isn't like the future. And every stati statistician that's trying to build models about predicting the future are using substantially more inputs than just historical data to do it. And I think that's where we have the opportunity to leverage the power of these tools to make the best possible decisions uh, in our ad account, which is to remove our, to do what we do really well, which is creative ideation and building the constraints in the system and then allowing the machine to do what the machine does really well, which is build predictions about the future.